Les juges pour ce combat, judging this bout at ringside, Monsieur Jean Lapointe, Monsieur Pasquale Procopio, and Mr. Jack Woodburn. L'arbitre, when the bell rings, referee Mike Griffin will handle all the action. D'abord, dans le coin rouge, portant la culotte noire, verte et or, et pesant 167,9 livres. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with green and gold trim, and weighing in at 167.9 pounds. En 36 combats professionnels, il a remporté 33 victoires, 17 par KO, et un combat nul. His professional records reads a very impressive 33 wins, 17 by knockout, and one draw in 36 bouts. Mesdames et messieurs, l'aspirant numéro 1 au titre canadien et ancien champion du monde WBO, classé présentement numéro 13 par le WBC. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the number one contender for the Canadian title, currently ranked 13th by the WBC and former WBO middle champion of the world, de Montréal, from Montreal, Otis Magic Rand. Dans le coin bleu, portant la culotte rouge et noire et pesant 166,4 livres. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the blue corner, wears red with black trim and weighed in at 166.4 pounds. En 19 combats professionnels, il montre 14 victoires, 4 par KO et une nulle. His record shows 19 bouts, 14 wins, 4 by knockout and 1 draw. Mesdames et messieurs, accueillons de Qualcomm Beach en Colombie-Britannique, le champion canadien des super moyens. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Qualcomm Beach, BC, the super middleweight champion of Canada, Mark the Machine Gun Walnow. Are you ready? Let's go. Mark, Otis. You guys received your instructions in the, in the dressing room? Remember, you have to obey my commands. It's a championship fight, you're both professionals, and they can conduct yourselves as well. Shake hands now. Good luck to both of you. This is for the Canadian Championship, so the Canadian, not the Quebec rules, take precedent. No three knocked on, no standing eight. The difference here, fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round. As we get ready to go here, I got to tell you, Bill, big story here. Mark Wolnick, 14-4-1, uh, but he's 23 years old. He has immense respect for Otis Grant, but that he thinks of him. That was then. This is now. And Grant's a 36-year-old fighter. We see these are both southpaws. Wow, what a rapid clip after watching a couple of heavyweight uh, fights. They are really putting punches together in there. Grant wants to get on the inside, and he digs that right to the body nicely. Well, it's old confidence against new confidence is what both guys were saying. Right, it's true. Here comes Otis Grant trying to work in behind that jab. Little flurry, and then he'll get out, and Wolnif especially worry, worry. He doesn't want to get caught inside, so he's got to create and control distance here. That would be the way to do it, and that would be to be first and land often. He's missing with his jab here. And Grant is picking, picking his spots and well, he's being instructed working to, his way in. He's really being sort of let his hands go. He, he seems to be shorting his own punches. He can't do that. And Grant really nicely, nicely rolling under shots and getting inside, which is where he wants to be. And Wolnip, Wolnip again wants to create and control that distance. So two left-handers there, predictably moving to the right. So no problem when a southpaw meets a southpaw. It will throw some if you don't meet many of them, but both say they have faced southpaws. It's absolutely no problem. Otis Grant is in the black, and then we see in red is Mark Wolnoff. He's the Canadian super middleweight champion. And there's the instruction we're talking about. They want Mark Wolnoff being first, and he really should be. Looking to throw that jab, he tries to go to the body there, and now trying to put punches together as they hold. And you can see the scar tissue on Otis Grant's left shoulder, most notably. And that, those are the signs of that accident again. And look at those left ribs, too. Oh, a miraculous, see. miraculous recovery that this guy has is in a boxing ring today. Nice lead left by Grant, but now he backs off. Well, he's trying to, in his own defensive way, maintain control. 
there's no question it looks like he has respect. He wants to see what Woolnuth has. And I give Woolnuth credit. He's the younger guy, and he's coming forward enough with aggression. But both guys ob obviously leery of the other. you got to feel the guy's power. you got to see how he moves first. Unless you feel you could just jump somebody cold. Otis Grant's 36 years old. Moving well, though. Now looking for openings. And really tough to find. Good defense, I think, by Mark Woolnick. He's got his elbows in, and he's got his gloves up. And his chin is down. <laughs> Good pace to this first round as they're closing it out here in Montreal. Otis Grant in black and in the red is Mark Warner. Crowd likes it. Slow pace. We go to Grant's corner. His brother Howard is his trainer. First time. Okay. Gotta keep moving ahead. When he's on the ropes, don't load up on the shots. You understand? He's super that's exactly what they want. Control that range. They want Wilnup to really use his quickness. Although Otis Grant at 36 is a very quick guy, I think. But the advice in that corner, keep moving your head. Be elusive. And I think he is. And don't, again, Stay outside. As, don't try to load up as much. Just put those punches together short and crisp. And I agree. I, I, I'm, I'm impressed with Mark Wilnup. He's very quick and his defense is tight. And I think most importantly, while he absolutely has immense respect for Grant, it doesn't look that he's not intimidated. Nice fight in this fight. Grant trying to find that body. He'll crouch low. He's already lost the uh, height battle and the reach. So one of standing tall, but now being forced to flurry a little bit, now holding on, and Grant doing the smart thing. He is banging to the body once inside, staying inside here. And this is where Wilnuff should perhaps back off, but no, instead he comes back with some fire of his own. If you see a few swings and misses, that's just the quickness of Grant. Grant with his back grazing the ropes. There elusively rolling under shots and then rolling up and firing that right hook. And they want Mark Wilnuff outside. You can hear. He's got to get that jab into play and a sneaky right from Grant who comes banging and bulldozing his way in. Well, Wilnuff Grant should hold on. What his style would be, Nick, and he said he's going to see how Mark reacts. If Wilnuff comes one way, he'll do another. So it's really, it is bait and switch and a little bit of reaction on, on Grant's part. That's why you've actually seen both. He yeah. was on the ropes, now he's in the center of the ring. Yeah, I think Grant's being pretty cautious. I, mm -hmm. you know, he wants to see what this guy has. Perhaps feel he could crank up the pressure as this fight goes along. But you could see that he's committed to going to the body as much as he can, and that would be to take away Woodruff's legs. Wilnuff is uh, back against the ropes now, and he ties up, waits for the referee to break him. They push off. How about the size of the ring for these little guys? Does that extra foot make a difference? Well, I mean, if a guy was, uh, was moving constantly, and I do have to say that they both move very well, Wilnuff seems to be the guy who really wants that distance. Sure, it's, it's, he would rather have two extra feet. Looks like Grant can't find an opening. He's trying to make the play, but he'd almost prefer to counter, but without anything coming back, he just charges right ahead. But wow, look at Mark Wilmot just spin his man into the ropes and not going to be bullied by Otis Grant. That was the second twist, Nick, in this round. Grant, very elusive. Look, taking that shot on the gloves and Wilnuth missing with a lot of those left hands as he's trying to put him behind that jab at the bell. Hey, you're not. You're not. You're not. Ready? 
You've got to stay with your jab and keep moving. Okay, every time you stop and wait for him, you're playing into your, his hands. That's all you're doing is giving him an opportunity to score. You stick to your game plan. That's all you need to do. He's doing exactly what we thought he was going to. Right? Exactly. All right? Stay on the outside. Use your punch. Move your feet before he gets to you. Use your jab. Bap, 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 change. Bap, 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 change. On the ropes, don't stand and wait for him. You're playing into his hands. You're going to lose that way. You're going to lose. Okay, this round. Control this whole round. You need a whole round. Outside? Outside. Give him a water to rinse, Kev. Here, rinse with this. Okay, control this whole round. Really impressed with trainer Richard Lestage. You know, not too many mm -hmm. instructions. Basically, it is stick and move. Box and move and play to your strengths. And normally, they like to do positive reinforcement. I like what he said. If you do that, you're going to lose. He right. said it very clearly. Well, Mark Wolniff impresses me for a 23-year-old mm -hmm. fighting basically a, certainly a Canadian legend, Otis Grant. And he's, his focus is fierce, and it really has to be. He has to absolutely stay alert every moment and focus on exactly what he has to do to somehow break this guy down. Because Otis Grant does not appear to be a 36-year-old no. fighter on the way down looking to fade away. Because he had to drop that 22, and I don't know if that'll make a difference. I mean, look at that quickness. I mean, that's that's exceptional. Grant just continuing to roll Bob left, right, under shots. Mm -hmm. And Will of really should make him pay there. Maybe step back, half step, and nail him with an uppercut. But he's got to get off those ropes. They want him to box. They want him to keep this fight in the center of the ring. Feeling that Grant's biggest chance is to get inside, stay inside. So it's for Wilnuff, it would look to punch and get out. That's quickness. He certainly has the wheels to do it. Otis trying to cut the ring off, though. Oh, he should be doing that, in my opinion, don't you? No, absolutely. He's trying to cut the ring off. He's trying again. And I asked him about the southpaw difference. He thought that Wilnoff would have the problem, but so far he has adjusted. But again, when he does this, I really think this is, even though it looks like Otis isn't in control, I think it's where he's sort of dictating tempo. Sounds strange. Good pace to this fight, and Wilna firing combinations, and he, just, he feels he's getting enough free shots here. Grant lying in the woods, unloading that left as he really launches himself into that left hand. Otis Grant, 36 years old. Look at, look at the shape he's in, and look at him as he begins to rapid fire and rush it up his attack. His attack. So the offense coming in a big gear. It looks like Grant's waiting game is over. Well, he's just learned something now. He has just learned something by watching what he's done. He sees what he can do. Now, can he go back to it is the question. Help thinking that Otis Grant's trying to set some traps. That's what I think. But Mark Wolniff would be wise to again do exactly what he's doing there. If you see some shots here on the ropes, take it. If not, get off, go back into the middle of the ring and use your speed, use your quickness. Now, this is where Grant wants him maybe to bang with him. He's inside. Now he's looking for leverage just before the bell and a couple of late shots, and Grant knew it mm -hmm. and apologized. Simple. Start listening, or you leave your bell here. What do you want? Well, you're not getting it this way. When he comes to you, or it's actually when you're leading, you're going in on him. You throw a couple punches, you're leaning in. Why? So Otis that's Grant, his fight. You know that's his fight him, is inside. Stay outside. Use your jab. Use your quick one. Defensive two, moves. Really very smart. And that comes with his elusiveness. He is difficult to hit flush. He shows both sides. He shows where he can come in and lay in. Okay, you're, you're not really going to get a clean shot on him. Then once he comes out, He'll show you some. He'll show you some pop. And once he's inside, he wants to stay inside. But they're actually backing off. Very good. You're not coming inside with him. You're digging inside. You have to sit on inside. Don't hold on to him. Dig these shots. Boxing. You're boxing this guy like nothing, man. Just boxing. Exactly what Howard Grant just we were saying. I thought once he's inside, to stay inside, and that's what Howard Grant wants his brother Otis to do. Not back off. Once you got pressure, increase it. Here comes Grant coming out. Even more conviction. Let's go. 
Close fight, Bill. Well enough, not backing off, though. He, he, I like him. He likes to stay in the center now. Well, Will not really doesn't show me home run power by any means. And maybe because he's moving so well, he's not turning over a lot of shots, sitting down on his punch as well. When he gets the free shots, though, he should just score points and then move out quickly. He has used his strength to sort of twist over this into the, into the, into the ropes. But again, yeah. Grant does not seem to mind being there. Well, he's giving him nice little angles, I think, too. He's just cutting those corners really nicely and mm -hmm. trying to run Otis Grant into some punches. But again, if he starts working off the jab, then instead there, looking to counter, failing to discourage Otis Grant Black, who continues to look for those openings, flicking his jab as well, and looking to unload that left hand. But again, you, you see the change in nature, though, by Grant. He will, you'll see him backpedaling, and now, now you know he's basically in a pivot in the center of the ring. Well, it's just going to be interesting to see how judges score this fight because a lot of them, you look at volume punching, and it looks like Mark Wilniff mm -hmm. is landing more shots, but Grant seems to be landing, quality. once he's inside, some quality, yeah, so what do you like better? It really hasn't fallen into any discernible pattern this fight, no. and that's what's really making it interesting. As you said, there's been some shifts in terms of strategy and the way guys are approaching each other. And there's a, I, I just, I hate that. I wish they would take those darn things away. I'm with you. I knew it was, I knew it was gonna make a difference. Time. Though, nothing against ring announcements and that type of thing, and, and obviously it's important, but you really cannot compromise the ring for that. Right. That's the fifth twist, I call it. The fifth turn. Boy, Otis Grant, 36 years old, black, looks absolutely fresh. Fighting a guy 13 years younger and the Canadian super middleweight champion. You know, in the corner, and look at Grant coming out. He still can come in, and he still can't score. Can win out. He cannot score. And Grant inviting him in now, inviting him. So what do you do? And the crowd appreciates it. They see it. I don't think you want to be there. I think you back off and let him come to you. Let Grant come out of that corner. It's not going to do Wolnoff any good to be there unless he gets absolutely free shots. Well, again, Wolnoff was sort of imploring him to come back out, which is why he was staying on the back. But again, oh, even though it sounds crazy, Otis sitting now, literally sitting on the rope. But I think he's trying to make a statement. I, this is still mine. He launched himself with that, back into the fight with that right hand, and then comes back with a left hook, just or a left across just before the bell. You did a training, okay? That body shot, you got an answer for that. Listen, have a drink. When you're on, when he's on the ropes and you're coming in, don't lean in after you punch. Go back long like you did there, but keep an effort on him. Sit back and pick him off. Just slide over, back and forth a little bit, okay? You've got to stay long with your jab and use your ankle. Well, you can see why he's called machine gun, because Wilna wants to, wants to put him in rapid fire motion. He's trying to do that, but you can see him being frustrated. <laughs> like, it's, hey, are you coming inside or are we going to go outside? Well, that, again, that was the cat and mouse, Nick. Yeah, great. Uh, I think, again, very, very okay. heady corner work there. Mark Wilner's trainer, Richard Lestage, saying, hey, get full extension. Take that half step mm -hmm. back. Why take away your punching room when you're when you're in close that way? That's what Grant wants to. Which is why like, like Grant was telling him, come on back in. Right. Now middle row. Oh, and he gets clocked. Beautiful counter by... Otis Grant, that right hand was perfect. Will that discourage some of Mark Wilnip's ambition? Another right hand, very quick from Grant. Now he's inside as he wraps to the body. And Grant putting together 30 solid seconds. It's very early in this round, but at the same time, absolutely impressive as he seems to have changed gears. Well, that was a nice comeback, actually, by, by Wilnip. But again, he, his mouth ran right into that previous punch by Grant. That's the type of fight that the well enough people are trying to do. They're trying to have him stick and move. All right. Never let Otis Grant get set. Grant's a very quick guy, I think. He's a, he's a complete fighter in every, every regard. But at the same time, if you keep him 
out of sync a little bit, and he never really puts that offense in motion. He could win this fight. Well, Roy Jones is the quickest guy I've ever seen, and in that fight, up until the eighth round, that was a, that was a show of double quickness, and he really he couldn't get to Grant in that fight either until late. Mark Wilner fighting him. Very intelligent fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely impressed with his composure and his overall skills as a boxer. Definitely a boxer first, and now he gets driven back and wisely ties up Grant. Now he should step out half, half step and get that full extension on some of his shots. Keep that chin down. Grant coming through, though. Yeah, Grant has him where he wants him. He even sneaked in an uppercut. Here comes Grant. Smart move by Wilnuff not letting Grant be the aggressor there. A little bit of change, a little open hand by Wilnuff. I don't like that. But Grant's winning this round handily, in my opinion, and it's obviously important. This is a fight that's too close to call on, probably to many onlookers. Wilnuff has to be careful. Again, the advertisements. Jab is once there. And Grant really not jabbing his way in. He feints the jab and then comes in with that overhand left. But he fights at such a rapid clip that it's difficult for Mark Woolnip to try to time Grant's rushes. There he stepped back very neatly. Grant coming in with his head, moving forward. I, I well, he could run into some him. counter punches, yep. though. But Woolnip. Really keeping his head in this fight and his focus, which is absolutely vital. So Grant with a good round there, I would say, give him that one. That was one of the ones that was clear. The other ones have been very close. You just gotta fight your game plan, Mark. That's all you need to do, here, okay? And you can sit back and be first. You step across and pivot. Come on, y'all work smart, man. I see I'm four, but you have four times double jabbing on you. You can't see I roll up with the left straight on the middle. Yeah. You work up double jab, you keep moving your head sometimes. This way you shuffle me, you don't know how to do it, I shuffle me. Good action from Otis Grant here. Again, you should, you should, you, that, that's the perfect Otis Grant game right there. He avoids the punch, he comes in with a counter. And that's the way he's been fighting. As Nick pointed out, he clearly won this round because of moves like that. And Howard Grant, his trainer and brother, saying you got to put some more punches together and start with that double jab and really work off of it. Because you don't want Otis Grant. Otis Grant doesn't want to run into any punches, and I really appreciate Mark Wilnip's quickness. Mm -hmm. And the corner instructions there, perfect, I think, for Mark Wilnip. Fight fast, basically. Fight fast. Use that quickness. You get off with that jab first, and even if you only land the jab, you move out. When the right hand, when the left hand's open, then you come in behind the jab with that. But you could win the fight this way, and there we see the jab landing and Grant pulling up short. Well, Wolf actually showing good patience here. He's looking. He's now looking. He's now looking and connecting. I Grant, really like the way he started off this first half minute. Grant walking in, taking some shots, looking to counter, but he's coming in squared up. And now it looks like hmm. Wolf now should really just spin out here and get boxing again. Again, he's got the legs. He's got the wheels to move. He's certainly got the stamina. He looks to be in great shape, as does Otis Grant. Nobody seems to be tiring. Nope, he should stay outside, which is what he's going to try to get back to doing. This is scheduled for 10. We're in Montreal at the casino, and Otis Grant bangs to the body there. And here we see Mark Wilder backing off. He's got a clinch over here. I'm sure he got stung by that body attack. He pushes off Grant. Wolnitz has in. to get back to boxing. Grant went low high, which did work. Oh, boy. Wolnitz with a risky move there, that lead left. He could have got nailed when he was reaching badly. Grant didn't make him pay in that case. Grant's jab just hasn't been an effective tool. Setting up his left hand, it seems, and maybe getting him inside. But basically, he's more or less waving it rather than punching through. Which is what you were saying earlier about the really, and double jabs are, are critical. Double rights, in this case, with the lefty, is critical. And he can't do it. He hasn't been doing it anyway. Wolnoff doing a good job of, I think, timing 
Grant, but he's got to do a little bit more offensively to win this round, or this one could slip away, too. And there, as he bangs a combination, and Grant ties him up. Mark Woolnuth is the Canadian super middleweight champion. He's in the red, and Otis Grant from Montreal, 36 years old on the comeback trail. Woolnuth is from British Columbia, so he's come a long way for this one. Well, it's critical. He started the he started the round off strong. I think he wants to close it out strong if he wants to make a strong impression Absolutely. on the judges. Absolutely, crucial rounds. Yeah. Crucial rounds for the champion. For both men. Grant's inside, and there we see Wood Woolnuth flurrying back of the bell. A good move. It could have been enough to perhaps steal that round. I mean, take it in combination. It's tough. That one was close. That one was close. I like the way Wilmoth started. Good work. Listen to me, man. Give me a nice punch. Again, good moving. I like the way Wilmoth started, but again, this is the key to Grant. He knows I have a terrific body shot, and as Nick pointed out earlier on, that I think stunned him. Rarely do you see a, a lower body shot in, in, into, the, into the ribs or just above the kidney make a difference. But in his case, it worked. Now, he really has a tremendous change. amount of effect with okay. that right we'll punch. Change. change again. Make him do circles, just like he did in training. That's all you need to do. He's laying out the game plan that we put forward. He's playing his part perfectly. You're not. OK? You've got to get that jab. Just pump him that jab, say it, choose behind it. Yeah, they really want Mark Wilmoth. I mean, it's very clear the instructions from the corner. Excellent job once again. They want him to keep turning. Grant, so he can't get set because Grant's jab is just, in my opinion, not a real weapon at this point. The stage said it perfectly. He's fighting his fight, you're not. Right. And he nailed it. That is exactly correct. Wolnif now smoking the jab. Got some steam on it again, but he's not a big puncher. There's no question about it. And that makes it difficult to discourage anybody. So you really got to outslick him and outbox him. And Otis Grant is a very slick fighter, even at 36. He's got the legs, too. He's shown no sign of backing off, of easing off. Any stamina questions? This one's scheduled for 10. Talked to Wolnuf this morning, in particular, about what he expected from Grant. He says, no, I am a boxer. He said, I am a boxer. He repeated that mantra. And he's been doing that. I think Grant's got to start increasing a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. Because he is the challenger here, and no matter how much of a legend he is, you got to take it from the champion. And it's a very close fight. Yes. No, by, by no means is this one wrapped up, even though we're through, we're almost through seven. Yes. No, a strong finish by Wolnoff can, can certainly swing the balance. I would say, if anything, Grant is ahead ever so slightly. Maybe, maybe two rounds up. I, I have, saw that he dominated. I would have I thought trouble, the third was good. Trouble scoring this one so far. I think mm -hmm. it's. I think it's close. It's absolutely close. Well, now he's starting, but again, it's it's with the right. right. Now, Grant's doing a good job in this round, yes. and, and the point is, I don't think Mark Olnick is doing much of anything offensively. He's moving, but he's not doing anything to impress judges in terms of controlling this round without punching, turning. Granted, who won't, will not be suckered into walking into any shots. It seems. Well, as you know, judges always consider you know, who is the leader in the ring. And, and no matter what style you see Grant, I still look at him as the man who is the leader in this ring. He's not, he looks like a counter puncher, which seemingly thinks that you're on, the, you're on the reverse. But it's not. It's all part of his game plan. Well, that's it. Game plan, exactly. Part of ring generalship. Mm -hmm. Again, Bill is forcing the opponent out of his fight plan, and that's just what you indicated before this started. And the corner knows that, that Mark Wood Wolnuf is not fighting his type of game, and he got to credit Otis Grant. But I still think that Wolnuf can, could do it of his own volition. He could change up here. He doesn't have to go to war with this guy, but he's really got to put punches together from the outside. And so far, we haven't seen it here in the seventh round, which he is losing. His work rate has really dropped off. He's just taking shots on the gloves now. And Grant's just looking for his openings and saying, I'll fight when I fight. When I want to fight, coast when I want to coast, because nothing's coming back. Wolnuff should try to finish strong here. He really should. Now listen to the corner here. He's there, out. 
Will there be a They're going to wake him up. They're going to wake him up. Let's listen. That? Outreach them. Outwork them. Okay? Don't just lay back and let him come in. You've got to stay on the outside, especially when he's on the ropes. There's no reason for you to lean in. You're not winning inside. Okay? You're allowing him to score. Even if you are going to win that exchange, he's still scoring. If you stay on the outside, outreach him, be busier than him, he can't touch you. He can't touch you. Okay? Quick jabs, double him up, come up that back foot on a couple snappy ones, put some twos behind him, and that's it. Then keep turning again. Keep turning again. Again, no this, no this. Again. Okay, back to your twos, all right? Everything off the jab. Back to double jump. Back to double jump. Back to double jump. They both want work off the jab. That's the, the both corners want, and of course, that puts the whole offense in motion. And Mark Woolner doesn't need much. He needs he needs that right hand, that left, and the left over the top, and then to get out. Fight quick once again. We talk about age. We talk about the 13 years difference. Now let's see it in action. Will it be a difference? So far, Otis Whoa. has not shown. I agree. No indication that Otis Grant has slowed at all. He's fighting at the same kind of clip. Mm -hmm. And as the corner indicated, and here we see Grant, but he backed off. It didn't look like it actually hurt. Uh, I would think that Grant would know enough to sense that he's got his opponent in danger. We're going to have with that same right, with that same right of all the kidney. You know what? He could have been shit waking up again. again. We see that uh, Mark Wilner is looking to his corner a little bit, and it seems that mentally his focus just isn't as sharp, Bill. He seems to have lost a little bit of direction in what he has to do as he eats a left hand there. Well, he may be searching, and again, this is this is the greatness of, of magic. I mean, he has that ability to do that to you, to get you out of your game, and then Speaking you do, now you're in search Grant, of. Yeah, the magic man. Well, I asked him about that name, too. He said, I said, where did you get it? He said, I got it when I was a kid playing touch football. I took the football, tucked it under my shirt, and ran into the end zone. Nobody knew where the ball went. That's a good move. That was magic. That was the first name. And then we got in the boxing. They had to come up with a second reason why. And, of course, he did a move on, a, on a, apparently on a, on a fighter that resembled Magic Johnson, of all things. A basketball-type move because of his great quickness. Mark Wilner's so. got to get back into this fight, Bill. Yes, he absolutely. really has taken this round off, too, and uh, he has just forgotten everything his corner told him, just to outreach and outwork. He is not outworked. He's getting hit, and he runs, swallows another counter punch mm -hmm. there. And Grant is now picking his shots, mm -hmm. not connecting all the time, but he's driving his man back. And again, fighting when he wants to fight, coasting when he wants to coast. But nothing coming back at him. Grant's going to move in and take his time and build the kind of attack he needs. He's got to get discouraged, and Mark Wilner's got to turn his man more. He's just not taking the lead here. Not first, and now he's getting the worst of it again. So he is fading down the stretch. Only fading the mentally, against physically. He's got to create some problems and take away some of Otis Grant's ambition. It's controlling action again, Bill, to suit your strengths, and I see that this guy moves so well. Mark Wilmer, he showed us how he can yes, move, how he absolutely. can stick and move and really turn over occasionally that left hand. And now he's getting outgunned here as he tries to go to war with Otis Grant. He's got to push off, get back in the center of the ring, and get back and move, stick move. He's still in search of, he's still in search of, and he's got to figure it out. Maybe Grant, he can. Grant's a tough guy, there's no question to, to solve. Proud appreciator, man. Yeah, Grant appreciating, he's definitely trying to tie this one. That's a beautiful word, man. We you sponge it down. Yeah. Pick up the bucket, well on your own. Sponge well, it right Beautiful work, man. Beautiful work. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can't be pulling out with your hand down, man. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Suck it up. You got two more rounds, man. You can't be pulling out with your hands down. Listen to me. When you are shuffling upon this suit and you rip and you upon this, upon this rope, yeah. You have to nail him in the ribs, yeah. You have to nail him in the ribs. You start to hold him up, my bleed. Around nine. You're almost left. Ten rounds. Ten rounds. I want, I want, I want. You understand? Ten rounds. Suck it up. Ten rounds. You understand? Don't be careful out there, man. Yeah. Come on, keep boxing. Off the double jump. 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 Off the double jump.
You have to love it. You have to love the remarks. It's it's a little bit of French, a little yeah. bit of English, a little bit of patois. No, I'm impressed. A little bit. I love the language they have. They have a, a, a three language, a three language dialogue going there. Bill, critical thing though that uh, Howard Grant told Otis is basically you're putting on a clinic, and it really was beautiful it was. work. And he's just got a load of confidence. He's never gotten ahead of himself, Grant. Never panicked once. I thought he lost a lot of the early rounds and got outboxed. But he's been cautious and he's cranked up the pressure. Lamar's trying to show. You see, he's trying to move the feet. He's really trying to make a conscious effort to stay not only focused and wired, but also trying to look for the opportunity. He's got to move his hands. He's got to put his hands into play. He's got quick hands. I don't think he's gassed by any means. No. And now he's getting, he's really getting outgunned a little bit and pushed around. He was controlling this fight. I was so impressed with him, but again, he's done a steady fade. He's been in decline offensively, and then he gets wrapped with a left hand. But Grant unexpectedly backs off. But he's able, again, punch when he wants to punch, rest when he wants to rest. There's the openings, nothing coming back. There's the jab. In baseball parlance, He's Greg Maddox. I mean, he doesn't impress you with his stuff. He just impresses you with all the things that he can do. Good analogy. I mean, he's clearly frustrated as a point. Well, Mark Wolf really having a tough time figuring out Grant. With Grant able to bull rush him there, really. Well, that's Very elusive. He's, he's rolling and not getting hit flush, though. <laughs> that's about the tenth time I've seen that in this game. Look at Grant just picking, picking, picking his spots. Where's the jab from Mark Wilner? Where's that range? How's he creating any distance? He's not doing it anymore. And as Grant continues to close the gap, exactly what he wants to do. A fan of boxing, boxer, has to love this. This is the sport. This is the science of the sport, which you're seeing in Grant. Absolutely. And people like to see guys just sit there and slug and, and all that, and that's all well and good. What you see from this man is, is, is sheer intellect. He should step back once again. It looks like Wolf well, well, should stuck back instead of him. taking those shots, getting creased to the body. His corner is imploring him. And there, him. now he is, and now he shortened up the shots nicely. And one of puts together a little bit of offense. Break! Step back now. He's critical, that he, uh, crucial that he wins this round and the next. Because he's let this fight slip away from him. Here comes Otis Grant, just what he wanted. Building an attack beautifully. Slowly taking over this fight as we close down round nine. And the crowd appreciates the round. The crowd appreciates the effort by Otis. You hear the let's go magic, you hear it. All right, here we go to the corner with one round to go. Grant really revved his engines here in the ninth. As we see him go to work to the jaw, flush with that left hand, backing off here, resetting. Okay, let's go to the come corners. up big and do your stuff. Just do what you train for. That's all you need to do. Right? That's all you need to do. Okay? Don't sit there and try and time him with one shot, right? You're not going to knock him out. No, no. I'll box him. Try and hit him a hundred times. Use that jab. Use your footwork. Keep him turning. You're standing. You're waiting. You're waiting for him to come and hit you. And then he's hitting you. Move your feet. Keep him turning. Use your angles. Control the reins with your jab. Shoot some quick twos behind it. But you got to let it go. Okay, and you got to do it for three minutes here, and you need a big round, but you can't do it inside. Don't try you got to fight smart, not just fight. Because if you come inside to fight him, he's winning those exchanges. Okay, you got to fight smart. you got to fight hard, but smart from the outside. Keep him turning. Slide around. Give it around him. I got the suit. We need to and tear for the magic. Simple. Don't rush him. Is fatigue a factor, Nick? I'm not sure, but you have to say this about Uno. The first 17 fights were only four or five rounds, maybe six at the most. Only in the last two is he going 10 or more. But Bill, I think it's very simple. I think they're out of answers. Uh, the champions kind of, they don't know. It's the same stuff. I mean, how many times can you tell a guy, listen, you got to fight with more urgency, though. I, I don't think it's enough to just say, hey, keep moving. And don't fight his fight anymore and don't go inside. I can't believe that 
the corner of Mark Woolnick, the champion, thinks that his man is winning this fight. He's losing his belt here, and oh, mm -hmm. the way I see it. I agree. I completely agree. But again, they're, they're trying to have him get some gain some distance. But can he do it is the question. He's got to put some to offense together. It's right. that simple. But he has to stay wide and then come through. And he's trying. He's trying. Now, my question is, will Grant change his style? Will he, in a sense, do a stall? I don't think so. I think no he need to. Feel he has to fight one. I don't know. I don't think he feels uh, threatened at all. Otis Grant in black having things his way. The champion, Mark Wilnick, may not be the champion for long. There's less than two minutes to go in this fight. He is the Canadian super middleweight champion in the red trunks. Two southpaws fighting at a good clip this entire fight, but it's been Otis Grant who slowly but surely has cranked up the pressure and taken over this fight. Mark Wilnick was very impressive early, boxing and moving. But it was Grant who never got ahead of himself. Well, Wilnoff's got a minute and a half to, to do something. He has to do something now. He has to. Can he? Is the question. He's trying. I mean, he is trying. He's trying to pick up the intensity here. He realizes it. You see, you see Otis not wanting to give anything away. He's going to remain heady. He's going to remain heady until the end. He, and when he stays to the center, he realizes that he can move away from those punches. He can use his great elusiveness, even though he tries to, when he tries to tie him in the corner. That's what he's trying not to do. Now Grant talking with the official. Might have been a little low. Here we see the champion fighting with the kind of conviction and thunder that we were looking for earlier. I shouldn't really say thunder. He hasn't hit, he hasn't really landed. A clean, giant seen, blow in seen many rounds. No, I agree. His left has been effective at times, clearly. Could be a little blood trickling out of the nose of the champion. We'll look. Yeah, just a little. Otis Grant looking for the openings. Be interesting to see how they score this one. <laughs> Had a, a champion one up early and definitely coming on big. <laughs> Maybe pitching a shutout <laughs> the last five rounds was Otis Grant. As you look at him there, having to feel certainly confident, but not overconfident. No lead is safe when you got to go to the cards. Absolutely, Nick. And when you think about it, I like what Otis did right at the end of the fight. He shook his head as if to say, no, that's it. I think you, you, you tried and you couldn't do it. Well, we'll see. I mean, Wilnoff had his moments. There was times when he made some legitimate moves, especially early on. He was trying to show, he was trying to give Grant a different look. But as Otis told us at the beginning of the fight, <laughs> there was no way. He was going to see what his opponent had. And once he realized what he was up against, that's when he began to implore his strategy. And implore is a good word because he was going through the corner. And once he was stuck in that rope, you figured, uh-oh. But no, that's the way Grant wanted to do it. He was trying to keep his opponent inside. Yet you heard constantly throughout the fight. You saw, you heard the trainer on stage continually to tell Wolnoff, listen, you have to stay outside. You have to remain outside. You work outside in, outside in, as opposed to inside out. He couldn't do it. There was some good move. There was some good movement by Grant. Well, speaking of action, look at the elusiveness of Otis Grant early. Excellent. Good stuff, Nick. I mean, you, you see it. You, you see early on that he just couldn't land. <laughs> you know, Otis was saying, no, this is my fight. You got to come at me. That's why I can use my intelligence. And he wasn't just a receiver. You saw on occasion he was a giver. He was moving and sticking and doing a terrific job of that. And just really more than anything else, it might have been a bit of frustration on his part. We ask you and we invite you to stay with us. So you'll see Paul what happens. The, I mean, announcer. the judges are formulating the cards now. I don't know necessarily a shutout, but I do think it was a strong, strong, strong performance by this man. Again, his third fight back from where he was. Remember, he was a top-notch fighter. He fought Roy Jones Jr. for the crown. This man, the Canadian champion, Wolnoff, did a fine job. He showed his quickness, and at times he was showing what he can do. He definitely has strength. He definitely has movement. But whether or not he can do what he wanted to do in this fight was the question, and I don't think 
he could have solved that man Nick pointed that out earlier he really couldn't solve it and then he used Nick used the word frustration which may have also entered into Wolnoff I think he was beginning to search for things once again the Lady has the decision let's get it up to the ring announcer two warriors Voici maintenant la décision des juges. Here is the judge's decision. Le juge Lapointe remet une carte de pointage de 97-93. Judge Lapointe scores at 97-93. Le juge Procopio, 98-92. Judge Procopio scores at 98-92. Et le juge Woodburn, 98-92. Judge Woodburn scores at 98-92. For the winner, by unanimous decision, a new... Super middleweight champion of Canada, Otis Madigaran. You see Otis, and the judges agree. They had it 98-92 and 97-93. A well-deserved victory for Otis Grant. You saw him. You, you saw him continuing to move, and the frustration word was was clearly the key. He just could not, Wolnoff could not really get into his game because Grant would not allow it. It was a wonderful, heady performance. It shows that you need not really have a super strong jab. If you can use your quickness and use your intensity, you can force your will on your opponent. It appeared that Grant had that. He had it moving, and he did a terrific job. Nick Charles is up in the ring, and he has our winner. Nick? I'm with a delighted guy, Otis Grant. You put on a clinic. Nick, I thank you very much. You know, it was a difficult fight for me, but, uh, you know, with Saul Paul, he's a very gutsy kid. He's strong. And, you know, to make matters worse, I dislocated my rib last week. I almost pulled it out, but I couldn't do it because it's the first show that group before Michelle was doing. So, you know, a couple of times he leaned on me or hit me to the body. I felt it coming back out. Uh, so my brothers tell me, stay inside and work the body. I said, I can't work the body because uh, whenever I'm working the body, I get hit. I feel it. So... It was a good job overall. All in all, it was a, a C grade performance, I thought. Otis, uh, how, when, and where to hit a guy, how to build an attack. Tell me how you broke him down. You know what? I, I was working off the jab. I think that was the best way. He had very quick hands. He had a fast jab with snappy, snappy punches. And what I found the, the, the most effective I was is when I would work off my double jab, and he would slip one way, slip the other way, and I'd catch him with the left hand. But problem was I couldn't put two combinations on him. I'd catch him tail end shots, and that's my problem when I fought fights all pause. So you were cautious early, and then uh, obviously you kept cranking up the pressure and definitely wanted to make it an inside fight. But even later, you'd back off and set your distance. And yeah. it seemed that he wasn't running out of steam, but he stopped boxing and really sticking and moving and turning and trying to cut corners with you. Right, and um, basically when he started doing that, I just started bobbing, weaving, because I know when, when I have to be I could be very, very, very elusive in the ring and uh, it's hard for guys to catch me clean. So I was trying to, like... Weave and catch him with something coming off a weave, but it never really turned out that way, you know? You spoke to us yesterday, so this is a guy I had to get past. He was the Canadian champion. You had a lot of respect for him. But Otis Grant, when you look at your life and what happened in 1998 after losing to Roy Jones and then sparring, and you were lucky to be alive and come out of that accident the way you did, did you ever in your heart of hearts say, I'd never get back to this point? You know, I, wasn't, I never wrote off my career as a fighter, and it was a point in my life when I, I didn't even consider boxing. Boxing was the furthest thing from my mind. You know, my family and my health was uh, the paramount in, in my life, was the number one thing for me. And then just helping my brother in the, in the gym with the guys and starting to train them and starting to spar with them. That's how I got back into this business. And then when uh, Yvonne Michel was working with Interbox at the time, heard that I was in the gym, he asked me would I come back, and I said, depends on the offer, and he made me a, a pretty fair offer. I think, me back I think everybody back in this building and watching at home is very glad that Otis Grant is back alive, well, and doing big things here in the ring. The new Canadian super middleweight champion. Coming up, heavyweights heroes continues. David Cadu, Daryl Smith, and a scheduled four rounder. Heavyweight Heroes is brought to you tonight by Casino de Montreal. And we're in beautiful Montreal, Canada on a sparkling late summer afternoon. More fabulous action ahead. We saw a thrilling fight just now.